You know, I recommend checking out the homie Mark J. Spears over at The Undefeated. He wrote how black coaches around the league are reacting to the Timberwolves passing over David Vanterpool in favor of going outside the organization to hire the Raptors' Chris Finch um, after firing Ryan Saunders. Now, you may remember, you may have seen this on social media, both C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard, you know, never wanted to bite their tongues. They tweeted their disapproval of this move, saying, like, guys, what are we doing here? How can you pass over somebody as qualified as David Vanterpool, player, he's paid his dues as an assistant, helped develop both C.J. Uh, and Dame while in Portland. Uh, it's like, how does this guy not get the gig? Uh, no disrespect to Chris Finch, who's also qualified, but, like, you got a guy in-house that would seem to be a natural to, to see what he could do as a head coach if you're going to move on. You know, Anthony Edwards, shout out to him. He's been a phenomenal rookie on the court and behind the microphone. Side note. So then today, the situation escalated because um, let's, let's put up this statement here. Um... Yeah, let me pull it up so I could read it myself here. So this is from the National Basketball Coaches Association. So they, and this is uh, President Rick Carlisle uh, and Executive Director David Fogel on the hiring process. They said it's always bittersweet when one coach is fired and another is hired. But this is not about individual coaches. We will be remiss not to acknowledge a deeper concern and level of disappointment with the Minnesota head coach hiring process. The NBCA understands and respects each organization's right to hire and fire whomever and whenever it chooses. But it is also our responsibility to point out when an organization fails to conduct a thorough and transparent search of candidates from a wide range of diverse backgrounds. Now, during this past offseason, we saw many NBA head coaching vacancies where teams led searches that were both diverse and transparent. This must be the standard. We must establish a level playing field and equal access to opportunity for all coaching candidates. The NBCA has been working closely with the league office on a wide range of initiatives that will improve further coaching searches in partnership with the NBA. We look forward to sharing details in the weeks to come. Now, again, I highly recommend uh, reading uh, Mark J. Spears' thorough breakdown uh of uh of the situation because the organization has a perspective that's worth considering but broadly speaking michael um we've been on the nfl quite a bit for um their embarrassing numbers when it comes to uh head coaching uh, hires or lack thereof when there are seven black NBA head coaches among 30 teams in a league where about 75% of the players are black. So as I say, they move the goalposts in the NBA too, not just the football turn. They move the, they move the goalposts in the NBA too. And this is where I throw you, Michael, a LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, no look alley-oop because I know you've been saying for a while, stop calling the NBA calling it a black league. A black league. Stop calling it a black league. Thank you very much, Michael Smith. That is a great alley oop. I caught it in a good position. I'm going to throw it down several different ways. Um, look, the NBA, we're not going to have true freedom. We're not going to have true uh, representation in the NBA. This is when it will be a black league. When you get some black owners and black general managers who are who are going to even this thing out a bit, I can see it happening on coaching staffs. I can see it happening in front offices because what's happened uh, in the last 10 years in the NBA? We've had more people, we've had more writers go to front offices and get promoted than you've had uh, basketball people getting promoted on coaching staffs. Why? Because you've had this, this explosion of analytics. And in that case, once again, people are trying to get involved in the game any way they can. They're in analytics. They're dealing with numbers. For the most part, a lot of those people are not people of color. And so there's another barrier that exists there as well. Like what Minnesota did, I'm not surprised. They're a bad organization. They've been a bad organization for a long time. And Bad organizations make bad decisions. What they did is, un, is 
It's so uncommon that we haven't had an example of this in about a dozen years. Going outside the organization when midseason? When a coach gets fired, when a coach gets fired, mm -hmm. generally an assistant on the staff takes over the, the interim spot. Mm -hmm. Last time that didn't happen was 2009 until recently. Yep. And you look at Vanderpool, I can understand why everybody is, uh, is singing his praises. He's got in incredible experience. He's played the game. He's been a coach. He's worked in the front office. He's worked with good organizations, Oklahoma City. We all love Sam Presti, so he's worked with Oklahoma City. He's worked with good players in Portland with Dame and McCollum. He's done a lot of things, and he's sitting there on that bench when the head coach, Ryan Saunders, gets fired, and they bring in somebody from the outside. And yes, I think it is... Uh, I think it reflects poorly on the Minnesota Timberwolves and it reflects poorly on the NBA when it comes to diversity in the league. But also in Minnesota, can you imagine being on the coaching staff, what the morale is? You have to sit around and watch this bad basketball team anyway. It had seven, victory, it had seven victories when Saunders was fired. You've worked with this young team. You've worked and, and, and put the extra hours in. And when they make a change with the head coach, they pass over all of y'all whether you qualified or not, and go outside the organization. What is that? Oh, wait, pause, pause. Okay, let me give you some anonymous uh, NBA assistant quotes from the undefeated, because what you just said speaks directly to that. Gary Rowley's quotes. Um, so the first one is, what are we supposed to do? Coach in college, what more are we supposed to do? What is the blueprint? Somebody help us, because clearly what we know right now is not helping us. This is the second quote from another coach, uh, anonymously. That is exactly what you just said. It's typical of the black coaching experience in the NBA. They use your skill set during the difficult times, but when it's time to reward you with an opportunity, they always seem to find a reason to not and then expect you to continue to be the good soldier. Now, uh, David Vanderpool agreed to remain on staff. Now, again, I highly recommend reading Mark J. Spears' breakdown on Undefeated about it because it's, it's, it's so thorough and he points out Wolves president uh, Gerson Rosas, Rosas um, who is a minority, is Latino. They have a very diverse organization at, 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 the high, at some of the highest levels, starting with the president, who I just mentioned. This is clearly like I'm hiring my boy. Rosas and Chris Finch go back. They, they, they work together. So I say all that to say this, and I, it's funny, I had this conversation in the offseason when Steve Nash got hired in Brooklyn, and it was a big topic about white privilege, which, to Steve Nash's credit, he understood it and said, you know what? It's true. And I am, I am, I am benefiting from my privilege. I was like, see, that's why Steve Nash is my man. That's why he invited to the cookout. So Steve Nash got it, okay? In this instance, Chris Finch may be qualified. That's not the point. And far too often when we talk about white privilege and double standards and moving the goalposts and us having to be twice as good throughout corporate America, but in this instance, the NBA, white people get offended by that. They get offended. They take it personally. It's not about a, a white coach or a white candidate or a white employee not being qualified. It's about no matter what we do, we're never the most qualified. <laughs> right. They always right. find a reason to look at a black person or a black coach and find a reason to not see him. I talked about, it's the same thing I talked about with Eric B. and Byron Leftwich. Why can't they be offensive gurus and geniuses? You know, it's always something where it's like, yeah, but. There's always a yeah, but when it comes to black people. You know, and that's all we're saying. And this process, they didn't, they didn't go through a transparent and thorough process to the association's point. He just zeroed in on his guy, which is their right, and his guy may be qualified. He may turn around the T-Wolves, but it's always a reason why we aren't the person that is the hand-picked individual, whether it's the network, whether it's politics. And then right. juxtapose that real quick, Michael, if I, could mix, if I could mix sports and cross the streams here for a second, because mm -hmm. we didn't get into this story this week. But you got Kevin Mather, the outgoing CEO of the Mariners who only because he Man. decided to shoot off at the mouth and insult every minority group possible to the on a, on, a, on a call. Yeah, you know, on, 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 on a, you know, yeah. out, just that he was that comfortable where he's like, I'm going to say whatever I think about everything got, got fired. It ain't about what he just did that got him fired. It said he got promoted after having uh, harassment uh, settlements 
and human resources violations. He got promoted after that. So not only is there absolutely nothing, it seems like these coaches can, and executives can do to get the opportunity to begin with, we got people who are not only less qualified getting jobs, but people who are screwing up left and right and violating all sorts of rules uh, and societal norms getting bumped up in the process. And you want to tell me white privilege doesn't exist? Get out of here, man. So the right. Timberwolves, they may, have, they may have hired a guy who they th who's, who's excellent. He may be excellent. It's not the point. It's like the, like the coach said, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to be viewed in that same vein? Because you had a guy right under your nose. And they said all the right things in this article about wanting to develop him and believing in him. They say all the right things. Oh, yeah, we love him. We love him. When it comes time to show that, oh, no, but we love this other guy better. So never fails. Well, I just, I just don't want to hear it anymore about this league. The NBA is in the same boat uh, as the NFL. It's in the same boat as Major League Baseball. So I, I'm not going to give you... I think the NBA has gotten a pass because of its entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's gotten a pass because players... And, this, and, and how, how twisted is this? It's gotten a pass because players speak out in the league and... Uh, the commissioner is there, and the commissioner talks to the players. Okay, so so what? Like that that what what do you want for that? That's what the commissioner should be doing. The commissioner should be listening to the players. The commissioner should be engaged. But just because you are able to use your voice in the league, and the league is is not offended by that, doesn't mean that you have power in that league. I know LeBron James has talked about being in ownership one day. I'm hopeful that LeBron can continue to play and before he yeah. steps off the court that there are a few more owners in position before he decides to join their ranks. I think that's what's gonna change it. They put black lives but it's not a black they put black lives absolutely. matter on the they put they put black lives matter on their court in the bubble. Let me just say say this for the million time. Absolutely black football. lives matter. Black careers black careers matter too. Black livelihoods matter too. So you, it goes back to like, ain't no racial reckoning happening here. You know, it's just, it's just more, it's just more comfortable for people to talk about it. But when it comes time to do, proof's in the pudding. So. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.